In this video, I'm going to introduce you to my new daily driver. So the vehicle I purchased is a 2016 Holden LTZ Captiva. So I'll just give you a quick um, intro just for the people that aren't familiar with these cars. So these are actually um, sold and marketed in the United States and Europe as a Chevrolet Captiva. Yeah, but the problem with the Jeep, um, it had a few transmission issues. Um, it, it needed that to be rebuilt. Um, there's some coolant leaks as well from the block. And to get all that sorted, that's, that's not something I could do. Um, and it's that would be around 6000 to get all that fixed. Uh, whereas I bought this car for 20000 it's only got 59,000 k's on the clock. And the reason I went um, with a Captiva for bang for the buck, um, compared to a lot of the other SUVs, a lot of them are only two-wheel drive now. Even the Jeeps, uh, uh, the, the ones with low k's, the people are selling them, they're, all, they're only the two-wheel drive versions. Um, so it's hard to find anything that is all-wheel drive that has a reasonable low amount of k's on it. All right, we'll talk about the most important part first, so that's the engine. So these cars do come in with different engine options. So you can get the V6, petrol V6, or you can get the um, turbo diesel. So the reason I went for the turbo diesel, it's just got a lot more torque compared to the petrol version. And the problem with the petrol version, it's an Australian motor. Uh, it, the quality of it isn't as good as the diesel version. Um, it's more reliable, um, 137 kilowatts and 400 newton meters of torque. So diesel option is the way to go. But this sort of build um, is a lot better and a bit more reliable. Um, just things like the way the actual motor is designed. So the earlier diesel, instead of having the turbocharger right here at the front where it's accessible, um, it was actually at the back, sort of tucked in that gap right down there, so the other side of the engine. There's a few silly things like that and the way it's designed uh, is really inaccessible. So mechanics hated the earlier, um, earlier models for that reason. They're very difficult to work on. So if you've done the maths, um, this car is five years old, uh, but it's been well looked after by the previous owner. It's got a full service history um, and they've always had it serviced at the dealership. So these do come in a two-wheel drive version or an all-wheel drive. So of course, this being the top of the range model, it is in fact all-wheel drive. So the way that works, it's mostly um, a front-wheel drive vehicle, but it puts the power to the rear wheels when it needs it. When the wheels, um, the computer senses that the wheels are slipping, that's where it will put more power into the rear wheels. So this vehicle, after owning a Jeep, um, I didn't really do a huge amount of off-roading and what for what I do at the moment, um, just towing things around, um, maybe the occasional dirt track, I'm not doing any serious off-roading, but just I wanted to point out some of the, the clearances on here. So at the front of the car, you do have this little rubber strippy thing here. Um, and then the height of that, if you look on that ruler there, that's uh, 20, 20 centimetres off the ground. So that's the clearance from that point there, but that of course is the lowest point. And the actual body, if you go underneath and get some measurements, I'll do that afterwards, you can sort of see that there is more clearance under there. So these wheels, these are 19 inch rims. Um, I was lucky that these tyres are all pretty much practically brand new tyres on it. The previous owner spent a thousand dollars putting new tyres on it. Uh, what else? Um, the spare wheel, it does actually have a full-size spare, but it's it's just a standard steel rim. It's not a mag wheel like that. So, standard steel rim, it's not a space saver, it is a normal tyre, but it's just standard rim, but that's okay. Okay, that ruler next to the car is a 1 foot 30 centimetre ruler, so there's about 27 centimetres here. So this is sort of the, the lowest point um, on the side of the car. All right, we'll take a look inside, but um, I just wanted to point out a few features. Um, I like how you've got lock buttons on all four doors, not just the, the front driver and passenger. So the way it works, it's got like a, um, a keyless remote. You use that to open up the doors. So press the button, that unlocks it, and then we can open the door. 
I like these um, red lights that come on. All right, so we'll have a look at whatever we see first. So the seat, um, you can adjust the seat. There's, it, the, the driver's seat is electronic. Um, the passenger side, however, has a manual control. So only the driver's seat is electric, but that suits me because I'm the only one that drives it. Let's have a look at a few other features. So I'll, I will talk about some of the other the things that, well, they're not really things that annoy me, but they're just features that it doesn't have, which it could have had. Um, these two buttons here, which are blank, in the US, so the uh, Chevrolet Captiva, it has a button here to press to make the um, wing mirrors fold in, but the Australian models didn't come with that. You can manually just fold the mirrors in. Um, the other thing too is, instead of having a press button start, it's got like what looks like a fake ignition key. Can you see that in there? So you turn that the same as you would a normal key. And they've done that to cut down production costs because the, the previous versions obviously used a key. So they've done that to save a bit of money. But it's, it's, it works the same way. The keyless remote just stays in your pocket. And then you just turn that the same way as you would a normal key. Alright, so the uh, entertainment system, this works with Android Auto and also Apple Play as well, so that's one cool feature. So, uh, one thing that a lot of people like to do now is, for the GPS, use something like Waze. So this app here, Waze, um, the, the good thing about Waze is that it sort of shows where speed cameras are. There's also live update traffic alerts, so if there's any incidents, so I can click on that and just see. Uh, car stopped. I don't know what that is. Someone might be broken down. And then you can sort of report things as you're driving along as well. So that's good. And then of course some um, Spotify as well. I won't play the music because then because of copyright. Um, I'm not going to go through all these features. Aircon, climate control, um, hill descent control, traction control, parking sensors. It's got parking sensors front and rear. Um, and then pretty much everything else is the same. Bluetooth controls, cruise control, um, heated seats. That's something I never had in the Jeep. Um, electric handbrake. This takes a bit of getting used to, but uh, after having it for a few days now, I actually appreciate it. None of this wrenching up, hurting my arm. Yeah, I'm, but it still works the same way. So you, you pull up on it to pull the handbrake up press down to release the handbrake. So it works the same way. Um, if you look at other reviews of these, they sort of talk about other features. You have um, cup holders here and then there's a compartment under here. Another storage thing here. It um, doesn't have one of those cool boxes like some cars do. Uh, glasses holder. Um, sunroof too. All right, so let's take a quick look in the back. So, um, all leather seats as well. And these are pretty comfortable to sit on too. The centre seat here has this um, cup holder thing that can fold down. A couple of spots there for cups. All right, so I'll just um, fold the back seat down. So, they will fold nice and flat. You can fit a lot of um, storage in it. Also the front passenger seat, that actually folds down flat too. So if you've got something very long that you need to transport, you can fit it in there. Um, this is actually the seven seater version. So there are another row of seats in the back here. And they, um, oh, I've sat in the back there, it's very comfortable. One feature that it does lack is there is no air vent in the back here. Like cars like this Santa Fe do have that. Um, but it's going to be very rarely I do transport people in the back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's just to, just to show you the. There's a lot of. There's room to get in there. Nice amount of leg room. Uh, where the pictures of the feet are, that's where you need to put your feet. Otherwise, your feet will get crushed when the seat folds back down.
and one other feature too I'll just talk about the tow hitch so it come, came with a tow hitch on it which is good that's like a thousand dollar option to get that fitted at the dealership um, with the tow hitch it's actually got and this is only like probably relevant to the Australians because I'm guessing every country has a different thing but normally you have a seven pin this has got the 12 pin socket they may have towed a caravan So the Australian and probably the New Zealand viewers will re may have recognised the um, TV commercial for this car. Um, it featured the stormtroopers, a family dressed up as stormtroopers going to a birthday party. Um, and then that sort of coincided with the um, launch of the Star Wars A Force Awakens movie. Okay, I'll leave it there and thanks for watching my video.